This is Coach Lee and I'm going to talk to you about the internal conflict of the dumper when you are using the no contact rule. And what I'm going to describe does not happen every time, but it's based on when there was a good relationship and when your response to the breakup wasn't too bad and when you're using the no contact rule. And this is how it often goes under those circumstances. The first internal conflict of the dumper is when you lay the groundwork, and that is you don't pursue them. You stop after the breakup. And so they may tell you they want to break up and you say, I don't want this. I love you. I want to be together. But when you realize that they're not budging, you stop. You don't contact them. You don't send a letter. You don't show up to plead and beg some more. You don't plead and beg. You don't get emotional around them and you're not even around them. And so they don't see any pursuit. And even though this might seem counterintuitive, what it does is it keeps them from running any further away. It takes away the need for them to put effort into getting even further away from you and from wanting to be further away from you. Because if you think about it, when you're wanting something and there's someone or something holding you back, you push harder. You try to find a way to overcome them. You're certainly not thinking about rejoining with them or getting back together with them. You're trying to escape. And that's the situation that they're in, whether they're right about it. You know, a lot of people will say it doesn't make any sense. They're wrong. This is a great relationship. They're overthinking it or their expectations are too high or they have FOMO or they're a narcissist. But you can't just go to them and say, hey, I think that you're a narcissist. And if you'd cut it out, we could have a good relationship. It doesn't work that way. When it's something like that, logic rarely has much of an impact because people go on emotions when it comes to relationships. And it's not exactly a good thing. We should have less emotion because love is a decision. It's a choice and it should not be based only on emotions because it will not last if you are basing it on emotions. If it, that's its fuel, it's going to run out of fuel a lot. And so you have to base love on more than just how you feel on a particular day, especially since those are so much impacted by chemicals, by moods, by events that are happening in our lives that we don't even realize impact our relationship, by our own selfishness, by the influence of others. There's all kinds of things that can influence love and being committed to someone. And that's why you cannot equate love with an emotion. Love is a choice. Love is a decision. Love is a pledge. And especially when we're talking about marriage and vows, these are things that can't just be dependent on how you feel because we feel different just about every day. And because there will be frustrations, there will be doubts. But the thing is, love is based on no matter what happens. It's supposed to be unconditional. Now, of course, I'm not saying that you should ever put up with mistreatment or things like that, but I am saying that too many people depend on emotions to decide about a relationship. And that's what's going on with your ex. That's why you can't just have a good talk with them and make them say, oh, you're right, I'll come back. It doesn't work that way. They have to feel it, unfortunately. And a lot of times they don't even know what they feel. Do you ever have those situations where you try to even interpret your own emotions. What do I feel? That's why some people will say, I'm confused. I don't know what I want. And so that's a lot of the reason I'm telling you that if you stop pursuing and you stop pushing and chasing, at least they won't be striving to get further away from you. And they won't be thinking that you are standing in the way of their freedom. So that will keep them from getting further away from you emotionally. They won't have as much resentment or any. They won't have frustration that's associated with you. And there won't be a need for them to make you even worse in their mind because you won't let them have the breakup. And so it's a phrase that I say a lot, but give them the breakup. Let them have it. Walk away, back away, disappear, go silent. That's the first step in this because it lays the groundwork for them to not be so far away from you that it makes it harder to get them back because then they don't have as much distance to go to actually be where they want to get back together with you. Number two is reconsideration. When there's no need to fight because you're not fighting and so they're not making that effort and putting all their energy into reinforcing the concept that they want to break up to defending the breakup to you, to trying to manage not just their emotions, but your emotions and feeling like they have to keep explaining themselves when there's no need to fight anymore. It actually allows them 
to reconsider the situation because when they are having to fight for the position that they are in, they can't reconsider things. They can only stand firmer because they're learning to defend themselves in this situation. And so you probably experienced it where maybe you have this idea, maybe it's politics or some other subject where we get entrenched in this concept or this group of people. And even if they completely change on certain issues, we still stay true because the issues are not important. It's the people or the party or whatever. We can do that too when it comes to a breakup. The more you fight them, even if they didn't want it quite as bad when they first broke up with you, if you push them and they have to defend it, it makes them more entrenched in it. They become committed to the idea. It's kind of like they're brainwashing themselves because it's like, I want this breakup and they won't give it to me. They just keep pushing me and they won't leave me alone. And so they grow to want it more and they stand stronger in it and they don't reconsider. As a matter of fact, they're completely opposed to that. They're close minded to it. And that's because they get pushed so far that they just want the breakup so bad and they become used to having to defend it. And so you don't want them to become a good soldier in a war of trying to break up with you. You don't want a war. You don't want to fight. You want to just back off completely because this person has said, I don't want to be with you anymore. What can you do at that point? Do you want to be with someone who doesn't want to be with you? If they have gotten to the point where they break up with you and they want to walk away, there's very little you can do in that moment. It's going to take some time and some work within them. And that's what I'm trying to help you do. And so the second point is where when they're not so far away because you haven't pushed them, they can actually look at the situation and be able to reconsider. That doesn't mean that at this point that they're just going to change their mind, but it means that you can slow them down from either running away from you or even to another person, or if they're with another person, like a rebound situation, it can cause them to be distracted by reconsidering the whole situation. It does not mean that they are ready in that moment to get back together, but it does mean that they are closer to that point when they have to actually doubt their decision. And they can't do that when you're pushing them and pushing them and pushing them and asking if their feelings have changed and asking them to take you back and crying and begging and explaining and all that. They can't do that because they're so focused on fighting against you. It's not even a possibility for them to actually reconsider the situation. Before I get to number three, get more information on my emergency breakup kit. The link will be in the description below, but it's a powerful guide to help you get your ex back. It's a series of videos and documents, and there's information in there on coaching sessions and on my support community. It's the emergency breakup kit. The link will be in the description below, or you can go to myxbackcoach.com slash EBK as an emergency breakup kit. So get some more information on that at the close of this video or open it in a new tab. Number three in the inner conflict of a dumper is when things start to become time sensitive. And what I mean is that your ex reaches a point where they start to realize that if you aren't pursuing and you're not contacting them, well, what are you doing? They don't know, but they know that you are not going to pledge yourself to a life of celibacy and that you aren't just going to become someone who's a hermit or who lives alone forever, that you are going to get back out there, so to speak. And, that usually causes them to think about the beginning of the relationship. They're already in a place if you have not been pursuing them and you've allowed them to stay somewhat close because when you push them, they get further away. Then there's not as much distance for them to have to travel in their mind to get to the point where they are wondering about their decision. Did I make the right decision? And since it's just in their mind and they're not saying it to you, because if they said it to you, they would be worried they would lead you on. That's why a lot of times, even if they're feeling some doubt and they're wondering if maybe they do want you back, they will avoid talking to you about it because they don't want to risk leading you on because they think then you would push them and they might have to say, no, I changed my mind. That's not what I want. After all, I was right with the breakup. And then they have to kind of go through your response again. And so there's a lot of reasons why they wouldn't do that. But alone in their own mind, they allow themselves to think about it. Did I make the right decision? And if you have stayed away from them after a little bit of time of you doing that, they have to actually realize that it's time sensitive because you will move on. You will feel better and you will move on. That's one thing I want you to know is that no matter how bad you feel right now, your emotions cannot cause you this much pain forever. The pain hurts so bad that it actually starts to make you more tolerant to the chemicals 
that are responsible for all this pain. And so it starts with you being overly sensitive to it. That's why sometimes when you feel anxiety coming on, you actually panic because of the, the anxiety. That's because you're overly sensitive to it. But that whole process where you actually become too sensitive ends up allowing you to become stronger. So this really intense pain you're feeling now and the tears and everything else like that is actually going to make you stronger to where it does not impact you this way in the future. Your ex may not know all the details of that, but they do know one thing. They don't have all the time in the world. In other words, if they are wrong about this, if they are sitting there thinking I could be wrong, they also know that you could move on, that you will move on. Because as they reflect back on the relationship, they remember feeling attracted to you. They remember what that feels like, that intensity of looking at you and just having an exclamation point in their mind and their heart because they like what they see. And then having interactions with you where it just feels like it's magic and that the universe brought the two of you together. They remember those feelings. They remember what that was like, even if they feel differently now. And that tells them another person could feel that way about you. And then what would happen? They would lose you forever because they know if you become head over heels with someone else and they broke up with you and hurt you, that they're going to be less appealing, even if they did change their mind. And so they realize they are on the clock. And that's a part of this that can really create interesting pressure. A lot of times this is when they will reach out casually, mostly because they're trying to check because they figure if they reached out and asked how you're doing, that somehow if you said you're doing fine, that maybe in the words you say, they could figure out if you're dating someone else. And so a lot of times they just do reach out and say, Hey, I just wanted to see how you're doing mostly because they don't know what to say. There's not a manual for how to contact your ex after you dump them to see if they're too far away or not for you to get them back. Like who talks about that? That's kind of a rare thing. So they reach out casually because they don't want to be rejected. They don't want to just say, Hey, I want to get back together. And you say, no, thanks. And so they start small and casual just to see if you'll talk to them because that's at least a good sign that you're not with somebody else. If you talk to them, it doesn't mean 100%, but they know that if you don't talk to them, it's a good sign you are with somebody else or that you're just done with them. And so a lot of times they will reach out when they start to realize that they don't have forever, that it's time sensitive, that they are on the clock. If they are in this position where they're doubting the relationship, they better figure it out. And so that can make things move really faster as we get into the next and final two points. Number four, reset of the attraction dynamics. And I've talked about this in other videos, but the idea is that when they break up with you, just based on what's going on, not because they're necessarily a narcissist or they have this elevated view of themselves and they look down on you. It's just because the situation is they are breaking up with you knowing that you still want to be with them. And it creates a sense of them being more attractive. It's not that they sit there all high and mighty and think that you're ugly or disgusting. It's just that when they're breaking up with you and you want to be with them, there's a very clear dynamic. They want to break up with you. You want to stay with them. And so the totem pole of attraction is kind of set and they are higher than you. At least that's how they feel. And it's just kind of the way it is. But when you stay away and they have to go through these internal conflicts, that's when they can actually start to see that the dynamics are not what they were. That if you're not pursuing, if you're not chasing, that your attraction for them must not be as high as they thought. And if you're strong enough to do that, if you're strong enough to be without them and live without them and not try to save this situation and save this relationship and beg and plead and all that, then you must be more attractive than they assumed you were. And this blends very well with the previous step where I tell you that they do go through it in their mind and they remember when they were very attracted to you physically and emotionally. And so they realize that maybe in this moment of trying to get the breakup squared away, trying to push themselves away from you and them saying that they're feelings just faded away or they had feelings for somebody else that they start to actually question some of that, especially if they begin to live a little bit in the past of when they were attracted to you, but they're seeing what's going on and they're realizing that you are not as unattractive, or at least that you are not significantly less attractive than they are like it felt when they were breaking up with you. And so it balances it out. At least it gets it closer which again contributes to all of this. And especially now that they're having concern and they're even beginning to worry 
that they have made the wrong decision and now they're going to have to pay for it and that they could not get you back. And I've seen this internal conflict result in several stories and I'll just quote one of them just because they don't all say the same thing, but this was a girl who broke up with her boyfriend and she actually reached out to him and he picked the phone, kind of surprised to hear from her. And as soon as he picked up, she started crying and she said, if I wanted to get back together, or if I wanted another chance, would you take me back? And he was really shocked because at first he thought, is she asking to get back together or is she just seeing if I'd take her back? And that was a pretty complex situation. I didn't get to speak to him until after that. He did tell her that he would take her back. And that's not the worst answer that you could give because if you say no, sometimes they won't believe it or it will just kind of create this odd awkwardness. And so a lot of times what I would tell people in that situation is for you to say, well, I'm open to that. But, you know, this whole situation has just kind of made me unsure about you. And so I would want to take it one day at a time. So you're not really giving it all back to them, but you are letting them know that you're willing to consider it. So it's not out of the question, but that also underlines that they are on the clock, that you are going to move on at some point, because at this point you're showing reservation and what they have done is actually damaged their position with you a little bit. So it's interesting how that can work when attraction dynamics have balanced back out. Number five, the internal conflict of the dumper at this point becomes a fork in the road. It's where they have to decide, are they certain that the breakup was a mistake? Are they scared that you could move on to the point that they realize they've got to make a decision and that they don't want to lose you and they may even have already lost you, which causes them to be pretty concerned. It's sort of a cocktail of emotions here, and it can put a lot of pressure on them to reach out. Now, the other side of that, the other direction on this fork in the road is to where they decide that they were correct in, in breaking up with you. And it's obviously not the decision that you want, but that's one of the things that can happen. It does not mean, however, that they don't go through all these conflicts again, because I've spoken to them and they will even say there were points in the breakup or after the breakup where I thought I wanted to get back together. But then there were days and times when I thought, no, I made the right decision. And they talked about how they would go back through these things even again and experience them again. And that's why Usually I tell you, stick with no contact. It needs to be longer than this 30 days some people talk about. Usually it's more like 90 days to 120 days, somewhere in there. And each day is louder as far as the message it sends them that causes them to have these internal conflicts. So trust the process, trust and focus on being silent and staying away. You don't want to show any signs of life from your end. You don't want to initiate any kind of contact. Leave them alone to this. Let them wonder about you. Let them feel that maybe they aren't as attractive as they thought they were when they broke up with you or else you'd be chasing them down. Do these things and give yourself the best chance. Now get my emergency breakup kit. The link is in the description below or you can go to myxbackcoach.com slash EBK and you can get the emergency breakup kit which goes through everything you need to be doing after you've been broken up with and you want the best chance of getting your ex back. This has been Coach Lee. Leave a comment if you have questions. If you appreciated this video, give it a like and share it with somebody. This has been Coach Lee, and as always, thank you for watching.